Good morning, Scallywags, and welcome to another exciting episode in a series of enigmatic events. I'm Shpoo. I'm AJ. Are movie curses real? Many people believe so. And with many of the stories that have come off of several different movie sets, it's hard to not believe in them. Like the 1956 movie, The Conqueror, starring John Wayne. That movie had 91 out of the 220 cast members contract cancer by 1979. Do you think that means it's cursed? Or could it simply be the possibility that the movie was filmed near the Yucca Flat nuclear testing site? Which that area was later found to have a very, very high population of people with cancer in its vicinity? Well, radioactivity will do that to you. It'll do that. Or how about the Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of the Christ? This one's actually weird. Yeah. I'll give it that. I mean, besides Mel Gibson? Yeah, besides Mel Gibson, yeah, and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, while filming the, the Sermon on the Mount scene, uh, Jim Caviezel, who's playing Jesus, was struck by lightning. And, I mean, that alone would be weird enough. But immediately after that, the assistant director, Jan Michelini, was also struck by lightning. And even that would just be weird enough if it weren't for the fact that that was the second time that she had been struck by lightning while filming the movie. Yeah, I think I would quit my job. Yeah, that might be a sign. <laughs> so in case you missed Tuesday's episode, this is what we're doing. Of course, we're talking about cursed movies and uh, whether or not they are real. On Tuesday, we discussed uh, the infamous Superman curse. Various actors who have played the Man of Steel over the years have uh, either had their life end in ruin or end in tragedy. Uh, we also discussed several strange things surrounding the cast and crew of the Poltergeist franchise. But today we're going to discuss a couple more films that could be cursed. And these may have a little bit to them. So let's just dive right on in. I know you usually say that, but... That's okay. First up, The Exorcist. Now this 1973 film was plagued with just a number of horrible things happening to both the crew, the mm -hmm. cast, the set, a little bit of everything in this one. Before filming, during filming. Pretty much uh, from before filming to years later to even even now, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, the film was said to just straight up be dangerous, even to people just watching the movie. So yeah. This one goes to you and me, to the viewers. In total, there are nine deaths attributed to this curse of the Exorcist movie. Now, they're not all connected to the movie, but they are all connected to people who worked on the movie. First of all, most people know about uh, Jack McGowan, who played uh, Burke Dennings in the movie. Uh, he died of a heart attack that was brought on by flu complications uh, just like a week after the movie came out. Uh, there's also the case of Visiliki Maliaros, uh, who played Father Karras' mother, uh, who died just before the film's release. And with her, uh, they, they chalked it up to natural causes. Obviously, right. she was quite old. But an official cause of death actually couldn't be determined. They couldn't figure it out. So they were like, well, she's, you know, she's old. We'll just say it was natural causes and move on. Uh, other deaths include a night watchman on the set and a special effects expert. Unfortunately, the deaths do not stop there. Linda Blair and Max von Sydow's lost family members while shooting the film. And then Jason Miller's son almost died in a motorcycle accident again while they were making the film. There were also several onset injuries. Linda Blair actually suffered a long-term back injury when the uh, the scene where the bed is kind of thrashing her back and forth, it actually broke her spine. Ellen Burstyn, of course, who played Reagan's mother, uh, the scene where she enters the room and finds Reagan, uh, we'll just say stabbing herself with the cross. Uh, she runs over to stop her and Reagan kind of throws her off to the side. Well, they achieved the effect of her hitting the wall, basically, or flying across the room by attaching a, uh, like a wire to her waist, basically, and then just yanking her across the room. When Ellen Burstyn, she went to William Friedrichen, who's kind of known for being just insane on movie sets uh, and she said you know it's it's hurting this you're you're pulling me too hard you know you got to calm down so he immediately and made no secrets about this but he immediately looked over to his stunt coordinator who was pulling the the rope and told him give it to her on this next one and that is the 
much nicer version of how he actually put it. Uh, so on the next take, he yanked the crap out of the cord, so the scream that you hear her give in the movie was Ellen Burstyn's actual scream from pain of being yanked across the room. Yeah, there was no she, acting in that. No, she actually still has back problems from that moment in 1973 to this day. Yeah. Perhaps the most bizarre thing that happened on The Exorcist was the whole set burnt down. Well, not the whole set. Almost the whole set. Of course, the room where they filmed all of Reagan's scenes, the bedroom, uh, it actually remained intact and like fully intact. Yeah, not just intact, untouched. The scene where all the demon possession takes place is the only thing that didn't burn to the ground and in fact was completely untouched. And the cause of the fire? Still unknown. They don't know. They don't know. They, I, they think it might have been an electrical fire, but they honestly found no proof of that being an electrical fire and honestly have no idea. It was just the closest guess that anyone had. I mean, fires on these cursed movies, it's a thing. It's a regular thing, yeah. yeah. But possibly the thing that uh, steers this movie into cursed territory the most, Paul Bateson, a uh, pretty much just a small time actor. He played a nurse in the movie. Not only did he actually kill a magazine journalist by the name of Addison Verrill, but there's also a lot of suspicion surrounding him that he actually was a full on serial killer. Though we have to point out that uh, there's never been any kind of conviction no. linking him to another murder it's just that's just a thing that is suspected by a lot of people he's never been arrested for anything other than other than her murder. murder yeah fast forward to the uh, to the film's premiere they held it in rome yeah. at this at this old church well the church was like next door right yeah, yeah yes the church was next door but it's like right there so it's a nice little piece of uh you know visual yeah. connection and uh speaking of that church there is a 400 year old cross atop that church there is and for the first time in 400 years during the premiere lightning struck the cross lightning again yes a lot of lightning happening in these cursed movies i mean one could definitely say that you know that the, all of that is just you know it's just coincidence oh well lightning just happened to, to strike there and and sure you could say that but uh it's kind of like we said back when we did the whole spies of norway thing you know m once you get to more than two or three coincidences it stops being coincidence and starts being a pattern yeah and patterns mean something yes could it mean a curse where there's smoke there's fire and apparently where there's lightning there's a curse and fire and fire yeah <laughs> all i'm saying is it definitely makes for a compelling argument well, you know, we talked about at the beginning that they said that this affected the audience. Well, right. people who went to see this movie got sick. Oh, yeah. Um, they, like, had all kinds of things happen people to them. People passing out. Yeah. One woman even claims that the movie caused her to have a miscarriage. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Wait. sure how that one works, but... But added to the yeah. curse of the exorcist. Scared her so bad that it just scared the baby right out of her. You I guess. You can't see claim to not be a terrible person there's also mercedes mccambridge who voiced the demon for reagan now she was promised as part of her doing the voice that she would be credited in this like a prominent mention in the credits in the credits um, however when she attended the premiere uh it was not her name was not mentioned at all. at all yeah uh of course obviously she's very not happy with that i mean just the regiment that she had to go through to get the the gravelly voice of the demon uh i know it involved jack daniels and cigarettes but uh <laughs> but um yeah she she actually would file suit for being left out of it and uh they they eventually they got it you know they got it fixed and whatnot and this is it's questionable as to whether or not this has to do with the curse or not, but after that, uh, her life kind of went downhill. She she had nothing but just hardship and tragedy for the rest of her life, which kind of culminated when her son mm -hmm. killed his wife and his two daughters and then committed suicide. And he left his mother, Mercedes McCambridge, a note that basically said, it was just filled with resentment and, and basically just said that all of this is your fault. That's horrible. Yeah. But perhaps the most cursed film in Hollywood is The Omen. Mm. Damien. 
you demons. It was you. all for you, Damien. Even before the movie was made, it had a, just a, yeah. this horrible, grim shadow over it. So, producer Harvey Bernard, he's uh, the one that would go on to produce The Omen, and this is all happening you know, long before. They're already kind of shopping around the idea of the movie, and he is approached by an advertising executive named Bob Munger. And Bob Munger comes to him and he says, you know, hey, I've got this great pitch for a movie. It's about the Antichrist. But if you make this movie, do so with extreme caution because the devil doesn't want this movie made. Totally sane that's, thing that's to a, say. That's a normal pitch. Sure. I feel like that happens in Hollywood all oh, the time. Oh, probably. Yeah, they're all Satan worshippers or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> they are um, <laughs> you, can, you can't say something like that. I just did. What are you talking about? So Munger would actually state in an interview later that he told Bernard, and I quote, If you make this movie, you're going to have some problems. It's the devil's greatest single weapon to be invisible, and you're going to do something which is going to take away his invisibility to millions of people. He's not going to want that to happen. Got a great idea for a movie. You're probably going to die as a result of it, but hear me out. Maybe he should have taken it a little serious Anybody because... That? This film, even before it started, oh boy. It, it had issues. Yeah, it had that's putting it like as lightly as humanly possible. First, you had uh, Gregory Peck's son committed suicide. Then, Gregory Peck, writer David Seltzer, and executive producer Mace Newfeld, all three of them were in separate planes. Two of them were struck by lightning. The third one was in a near miss. Oh, yeah, almost struck by lightning. Almost struck by lightning. I mean, three separate planes and this going is, three separate places. At three separate times. Yeah. Three different, yeah, it, and this is all, like, within the span of, like, a month. Again, lightning. Y yeah, more more lightning. And then I'm sure we're probably going to have some more fire somewhere in here, I think, maybe. I don't know. I don't, actually, there may not be fire involved in this one. I'm not <laughs> entirely sure. But speaking of planes, the film had chartered a plane. To do that, the really cool aerial shots... Before drones, they actually had to take planes Actual and helicopters planes, up. Big planes and, and take them. Um, they actually chartered a plane, but for some reason, the plane that they chartered, they couldn't use the day that they needed to use it. Well, that plane actually crashed. It went on to a different group of people and yeah. ended up killing everyone on board. Yeah. You know, planes and, and, and the omen don't mix. Yeah. So this is another Richard Donner film. Of course, Superman was as well, and we, we already talked about that one on Tuesday. But uh, Richard Donner's hotel was actually bombed during the during the making of The Omen. Mm -hmm. The IRA bombed his, uh, his hotel the day after they shot the infamous safari park scene. Oh, the safari which, park scene. Which, oh. The, the baboons. The baboons, yes. Yeah, and speaking of the safari park scene, yeah. So the guy that uh, helped to train the baboons for the movie, the day after he tra helped to uh, train those baboons, he also was killed when a tiger bit him on the head and killed him instantly. And this or not just bit him, grabbed him by the head and like drug him off, yes. killing him instantly. And this is at the park yeah. that, that they filmed, you know, they filmed outside of an actual safari park. And this took place, he was someone who worked there and this took place right afterwards the day after the film crew left yeah there's also the stunt man that stood in for gregory peck uh the 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 graveyard scene he actually was attacked by the rottweilers in the graveyard scene and that, they that was part of the movie did, well i mean <laughs> he had protective gear on and stuff but they actually attacked yeah. him attacked him not just the doing their actions they attacked him uh to such an extent that they actually got through the protective gear that he was wearing, uh, leaving him with some some pretty nasty injuries with that one as well. Probably one of the weirdest coincidences oh, yeah. is something that happened after filming. After the filming had wrapped, uh, special effects director John Richardson and his assistant Liz Moore moved on to another film, as you do. They actually were going to be working on a film called A Bridge Too Far, and that was being filmed in the Netherlands. While they were driving to set, they were actually in a car accident. John Richardson survived, but Liz Moore was actually decapitated. And what's weird about that is that they were the people that had actually done the infamous decapitation scene 
in the omen and according to local reports the scene where this all happened the crash scene that is um there was a sign in the vicinity of the crash that said that the distance to the nearest town the town's name was omen o-m-m-e-n and it was 66.6 kilometers away so not sure if i believed in movie curses before that fact but um it's starting to look a little fishy speaking of a bridge too far there was also a stuntman who had worked on the omen who then went on to also work on a bridge too far and he actually wound up in the hospital after one of his stunts went wrong and i couldn't find if this happened on which movie this happened in because it worded the article i read this from it it worded it kind of weird but uh, it made it out to sound like the accident happened on the omen and that he just happened to have also gone on to a bridge too far because it had just mentioned is, the previous two is people. Is he the one who fell and well, said something? Well he was something. he was supposed to have like just jumped off of a roof and landed on an airbag. It was yeah. on the omen. Yes. It was okay, on the omen so when was I was doing omen. research. Yeah. So he's supposed to just go off the roof, land on the airbag, no big deal. And guys done this a hundred times, you know they've got a certain way that they're supposed to fall. Well he fell early and they said he, he fell strangely and he woke up in the hospital basically he missed the airbag and when he woke up they were they're like what happened and he all he could really say was i don't remember much but i just remember that something pushed me yeah so is this a curse or just like horrible horrible coincidences <laughs> like the worst coincidences oh my ever God. I guess we're just never actually going to know. True. You're never going to know if it's actually a curse. But what do you think? I think that all we can really do is look at the possibilities. So what do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you're Obviously. watching us. And as long as you're here, make sure you do all of the YouTube things like liking, sharing, and most importantly, please subscribe. Of course, that helps out the channel. Just and one we button. do, yeah, click done. It takes less than half a second. But uh, yeah, we've got different content here every Monday through Friday. Each day is a little bit different than the last, so there's something for everybody. So subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that stuff but most importantly guys drop us a comment we love to hear from you we try to answer as many comments as humanly possible <laughs> so let you're right so let us know you know what do you think of the uh what do you think of the show what do you you know what do you think about the movie curses which one is your favorite movie curse if if there is such a thing did we not mention your favorite yeah. let us know that because there's a do, lot we left we, out we understand we left out quite a bit um so if there's one that you want us to do like yeah. we might do another one of these if calls. there's one that can cover an entire episode of this oh, show let us know and we'll we'll do a whole episode on it but most importantly speaking of which drop us a comment and let us know what you want to see next in this series of enigmatic events thanks for watching